Greetings, salutations, and hallucinations, oh steam defenders. Back again for Vaping with Uncle Jojo. Tonight we're going to be talking and revisiting the Atlantis coil. Now, as we all know, we're doing horizontal now, which is the bomb diggity. This will step right up there with the Delta Twos and the Limos as far as flavor and vapor production. And we all know pretty much how to build a coil. You're going to do, depending on your gauge, you're going to do X amount of wraps around, say, a 3 millimeter or a 2 millimeter screwdriver. And you're going to leave the legs long enough to hang out past the bottom here. One goes through the white grommet. One goes up against between the barrel and the grommet, as you can see right here. That's your negative post. You're going to cut it off so it don't interfere with the threads. The other one's going to be hanging out like that one is. And you're going to clip it off. So that's the easy part. Now everybody's asking about wicking. Oh yeah, and by the way, folks, you don't have to redo the coil. Just pull the cotton and reburn and burn that coil three or four good times. Dry burn that coil to clean it. Now as far as the wicking goes, I'm going to be using my E-Leaf resistance meter. Since my Asmodus I bought off Amazon for $20. just lasted just long enough to get through its warranty period. And it promptly crapped and everything I put on it was 8.88 .88 ohms. Whether it was or not. Lovely. So I got this little E-Leaf for 12 what I do like about it is, it has this extension piece here for your 510 connector. What that allows you to do is it picks up everything up off that deck and gives you a nice little workstation. It's very handy. So I've got my Atlantis base screwed down. I'm going to take my coil, give it just enough of a turn basically to catch. That just keeps it from moving around in excess. Now we're going to take a pair of scissors, and this is uh, a piece of Shishido Japanese cotton. You can use puffs. Uh, cotton bacon, whatever it is that you're using. I just happened to have bought this and it's lasted me. You get a huge sack for like $12, $13. That's about how big you want the piece. It's, it's not very wide at all. Try to cut it straight. I won't. I can almost promise you. Straight lines are not my thing. As you can tell, straight lines most definitely are not my thing. Okay. Now the reason you want that puppy so long is this. You are, of course, going to have to twist one in. As you can see, I didn't strip anything off. The thing about it is cotton is very, very, very easy to tear. So if I leave those hard strips on the outside, that bonds it and helps make it strong enough to withstand all of this without coming completely apart. And I don't have to be as gentle with it. Now, make sure, to make sure though, that you've got enough to go all the way through. Because if you don't, you're going to be, and you're going to pull it all the way back out. And do it again. So, and of course, you always got that little bitty thing there that's going to stick out a little bit. Run it all the way through, then it bumps right there. Boop! Continue to turn it, just like you're just like you're screwing in a light bulb. And what you're doing is you this this way the cotton isn't super tight. It's just as tight as it needs to be to get inside of that coil. And that's all you want. You don't want it tight. You want it fluffed up in there. And you turn it back the other way. And what you're doing is fluffing that. This is a wasteful way to do it. You don't have to use this much cotton. I'm just doing it because it's a lot easier to, for you to be able to see it. If I use a full, a full piece. Normally I'm going to use one just long enough to get me this piece here. All the way through and then pull the rest through. Now, what I normally do is you can lay it right up against this barrel flat. And I'm going to pull it out just a wee bit beyond that. And snip it off. Turn this piece here. Same thing. Lay it flat. And I'm going to pull it out just a wee bit. And my scissors are about shot. One of these days I will get another pair. Take your finger, run it back and forth over them like so. You just want to, you're just fluffing that cotton up is all you're doing. Now, the reason you don't want this thing tremendously long is when you screw it back into your base, and of course, you, if, if you're going to get ready to use it now, you're going to wet it with whatever liquid you're using, and you go to screw it in here, what's going to happen is that cotton is going to hang up in those notches. I had one that was a bit long. It actually tangled up in there to the point where I had to get a pair of pliers to get the coil out. That's a pain in the butt that you don't need to deal with. I passed this on so you don't have to worry with it. Also, if it gets, it can pull some of the cotton out. It can pull the cotton so tight it has trouble wicking. 
This way you've got enough that when it when it's slick with, and wet with that juice, it's not going to tangle up on anything. When you get it screwed down, back it back up, of course, so that you can line your holes up properly. And just move it back and forth across that cotton a few good times so you can see it kind of fluffing out a little bit. That's freeing it up. Leave it alone. You're done. You can now commence Operation Vape Your Tail Off. Now see, it's just that simple. It will take a little practice to get right. If the, if the cotton is so tight in there that it's, you literally are tearing it to, put, to get it through the coil, you've got it too wide. Pull that piece back out. Unfluff it a little bit. At least cut it, trim some off the side up until you reach your tightly wound part. So up to about here, you want to trim a little bit off that edge and then try it again. Just a little bit. Just a little tiny little bit at a time until it just goes right through there just like it did with me. Once you've done that a few times, you'll be able to cut that cotton every time. You won't even think about it. You'll cut it perfectly to width. And it's really going to depend on an inside coil diameter. These, this one is... That sleeper coil there is a three millimeter diameter. You can go with a two. You can go as small as you want to. You can go with a tight coil, or you can do as I did. This is a sleeper coil. I just prefer the sleepers. They're my favorite coil. I've done the micros and all that. I haven't gotten in. I don't really enjoy all the Claptons because and all that good stuff because to me it's just not worth all that damp effort. But we are done. That's all there is to it. Remember these little tips. Watch this again if you want to. And as always. If you would, please hit the subscribe button, hit me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. Give me some feedback. What do you want to see? Do I need to redo this? Did I miss something? Did I forget something? Because I probably did. I'm not quite perfect, but I am almost perfect. <laughs> and if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you when the police get there to ask you why you're collecting toll. You tell them to get the hell off your bridge. You feel me? Now. Y'all have yourselves a very ble a very blessed night. I hope the Lord blesses you as he has blessed me and even more. I hope he blesses you to the point where you have to ask him to slow up so you can catch your breath. And folks, as always, 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 Uncle Joe will say unto you, much love and peas and cornbread.